This video looks in more detail at the design of observers. Previous video then derived the basic structure of a state observer. So the idea was to simulate a process model in parallel with the real process, but modify the dynamics slightly with an error term linked to the measured system and the model outputs. So if the original system was x dot equals ax plus bu and y equals cx, then our observer system, you'll notice, has got the same a and b matrices, but we add this additional term here, l, times the error between the measured output y and the model output m. And it was straightforward to show that if you simulate these two processes in parallel, the process and the observer, then you get these error dynamics, that the error between the model state and the observer state is based on a state transition matrix A minus LC. So an observer has got a very simple structure, and there's the structure. The key design parameter is the matrix L which is chosen to determine the dynamics of the state measurement error. So there's the dynamics of the state measurement error, and we're interested in this matrix, A minus LC, and L is what we can choose. So the aim is to give the state measurement error dynamics a desirable dynamic, and ideally the state errors would converge quickly and be small. So these are the state errors, and essentially, what we want is we want these errors to converge to zero very quickly, if possible. A simple aim, then, would be to place the poles of the error dynamics as desired. So in other words, we want the eigenvalues of A minus LC to be where we want them to be, and that could be P1, P2, and so on. And so the key question is, how do we place these poles? How do we choose L to get the poles that we want? We're going to look now at duality with state feedback. So if you go back to the videos on state feedback design, which was based on placing poles, then what we said there is if you had an underlying system, x dot equals ax plus bu, and you added a state feedback, u equals minus kx, then you get a closed loop system, x dot equals a minus bk times x. And we showed several algorithms for choosing k such that you could put the eigenvalues of a minus bk wherever you wanted them to be. The observer problem looks quite similar. So if you look at the observer dynamics, e dot equals a minus lce, and you look at these two and you say they look like quite similar problems. So that's where duality comes from. The feedback problem is choose k to place the eigenvalues of a minus bk. The observer problem is choose l to place the eigenvalues of a minus lc, and you can see they seem to be quite similar. Now, what we do next is we notice that the eigenvalues of a matrix transpose are the same as the eigenvalues of the original matrix. So in other words, if you do an eigenvalue calculation, on A minus LC, you'll get the same answer as if you do an eigenvalue calculation on the transpose of A minus LC. And so what that tells you is that we can actually do the eigenvalues, here it is, of A transposed minus C transposed L transposed. And there's a key observation here which we're going to do on the next slide, which is linked to this word duality. So the duality with state feedback. With state feedback, we choose k to place the eigenvalues of a minus bk. With an observer, we could choose l to place the eigenvalues of a transposed minus c transposed l transposed. And what's the key point? You'll notice that these two problems look very similar. The position of the b and the c transposed are the same. So C transpose is had got an equivalent role to B. Similarly, the position of the L transposed and the K are the same. So the L transpose is equivalent to K. So solving these two problems is actually equivalent. They are dual problems. So whatever techniques you can come up with to solve for K, the same techniques can be used to solve for L 
transposed. So any pole placement algorithms used to choose a state feedback k to place the poles of A minus BK can be used to choose L transposed to place the poles of A transposed minus C transposed L transposed. There is, however, an important caveat. Pole placement relied on full controllability, so we wanted the controllability matrix to be full rank, and here was the controllability matrix. Now, if you're going to do pole placement on A transposed minus C transposed L transposed, you need the equivalent controllability matrix, which is going to be given by this. You can see MO equals C transposed, A transposed, C transposed, and so on. And we are going to need this MO to be full rank. <coughs> so here's an important observation. Pole placement on A transposed minus C transposed L transposed requires MO to be full rank. But you'll notice that this MO is actually the transpose of the observability matrix, which was covered in the section on observability. <coughs> so in other words, the poles of the observer can be placed arbitrarily if and only if the system has full observability. And you remember when we did state feedback, we spent a lot of time saying first check that the system is fully controllable. Well here you have an equivalent check. First check that the system is fully observable. <coughs> How do we place the poles for an observer then? Well, we can deploy any of the algorithms discussed on state feedback. So what we're going to say is view the feedback videos because we're not going to do it again because it's exactly the same and we'll just give a quick summary here. You can use canonical forms, you can use Ackermann's formula, you can use state transformation. And what we'll do is we'll just illustrate two very quickly so you get the idea. First then, Ackermann's approach. First thing to do is define the desired closed loop pole polynomial, in this case the polynomial which dictates the routes you want for your observer. And the required observer gain is given from a formula, and here we're going to use MO as the observability matrix given there, and this is the formula. And you'll remember that from the feedback series. But there's one key difference. You'll notice we've used a transposed in the formula, whereas with feedback we'd used A, and the answer we get is L transposed, not L. But otherwise, the implementation is the same. What about using canonical forms? Well, you remember that we could do state feedback using canonical forms. So what we said <coughs> is if you're in a canonical form, you can choose the parameters of the closed loop pole polynomial directly by choosing the parameters ki. So you'll see the an minus 1 minus k1 is this parameter here. an minus 2 minus k2 is this parameter here, all the way to the end where the a0 minus kn is this parameter here. So you could choose the parameters of your polynomial directly by choosing these k's directly. What happens if we're doing an observer then? Well, we're going to get an equivalent problem. So if we write a transposed minus C transposed L transposed, and you'll notice I've got a top row with exactly the same structure as we had on the previous slide. So if, there's a big if here, maybe I should put that in capitals, if A transposed minus C transposed L transposed takes this form, I can now choose these L's directly to get the coefficients that I want. But of course here, my formula is full of transposes. I've used A transpose, C transposed, and L transposed. So that's what we've got. There's the formula with transposes. Let's look at what we would get if we go back to the original matrices. So if I now write down A minus L C, you'll notice all of the key parameters now come on the first column. So that tells me that the A matrix, the canonical A matrix for doing observability, has to take this form here. You see the A's on the first column, and then these identities on the upper diagonal. So that's the canonical form for observers. The L, 
will be a vector of L1 down to Ln, and the C is going to be 1 followed by a series of zeros. So if you have A and C in this form, then you can choose the parameters L by inspection. And just a reminder, this A and C are the observer canonical form. Using MATLAB then. So as with state feedback, in practice, numerical computation of observer gains is not a paper and pen exercise. And I would recommend you use software. It's almost identical to state feedback design, with the exception that you're using transposes where appropriate. So we'll give some quick illustrations next. But they are deliberately quick. So here's some MATLAB code for doing Ackermann's formula. You'll notice I've defined an A matrix, a B matrix, a C matrix. I form the controllability matrix using A transposed and C transposed, and I've checked, am I full rank? And you'll see here, the answers come out. My rank is 4. This is a 4x4 four four system, so I can proceed and say, OK, I'm full rank, so I can do the observer design. I've said I want the poles. At minus 0.6, minus 1, minus 1.2, and minus 1.7. I've used the ACA formula, and then as that gives me L transposed, you'll notice the line here where I say I've got to transpose it to get my actual L. And then I've checked, has it worked? And here you can see I've got the eigenvalues that I expected. A separate example here, this one is 3 by 3, and I've used place rather than acre, but otherwise the steps are the same. And you can see there's my desired observer poles, and there's my actual observer poles, and it's all straight forward. So the conclusion. We've shown that you can use the same pole placement techniques used with state feedback to place the poles of an observer. And we've shown there's duality between the dynamics of state feedback and the dynamics of the error when you use an observer. We've used the same pole placement algorithms, but we've used A transposed in place of A and C transposed in place of B. And you need to remember that you require full observability in order to be able to select L to place the observer poles arbitrarily. <laughs>